A few weeks ago, we voted in the European Parliament a resolution requesting the freezing of the EU-Turkey accession negotiations. Parliamentarians wanted to give a message to the government of Turkey that the undemocratic course shown by imprisoning members of the parliament, journalists, the dismissal of judges, teachers, civil servants without specific charges, a state of emergency that threatens everyone are not compatible with European values. Myself and others that stood against this decision fully embrace its content, but consider the EU-Turkey accession process as the most important tool we have at our disposal to intervene in Turkey, supporting throughout our roadmaps and our chapters our common democratic values with the people of Turkey. Supporting rule of law, freedom of expression, reform of judicial power, fight against corruption, etc. Only this institutional tool gives us access to every debate and allows us to be present in Turkey every day. Do we use it efficiently? Not at all. EU's voice is not heard in Turkey as it should, but that does not mean we have to throw the accession to Laway as useless, because we do not have an alternative. We just have to work harder and with a vision. Enlargement has been one of the EU's most successful foreign policy tools, which, was, which is killed by its own politics, which has been held hostage of populism on the rise. The Brexit is the perfect and very unfortunate example of this fact. The EU have failed the test of integrating Turkey as an accession country, and the accession negotiations are de facto frozen. The European leaders and policymakers are going to discuss to freeze negotiations with Turkey, in which they did not put their sincere commitment, time and energy behind. This shows us EU's incapability in solving problems and it is lost transformational power. As Turkey's progressives and Democrats, we believe that EU should be part of the solution, not the problem. Europe stands on the brink of the abyss. We faced a long delayed but inevitable choice. Either we leap forward towards unification or we are dragged down to the inevitable disintegration. We must work for an integrated economic governance model to increase investment and create jobs, or else EU go ongoing financial crisis will just continue impeding social mobility and undermining social justice. We must address the needs of the people left behind as a result of globalization, but also dispel the myth of quick and easy solutions. Wherever populists reach power, as in Greece, they clearly demonstrated the folly of their promises, but if the EU does not give clear alternatives, the attraction of populist simplistic speech will push Europe over the edge. For all countries that are on the path of accession, European stands as a lighthouse of democracy, stability and economic growth. But the fast expansion to our East forced our leaders to overcorrect and deny any enlargement on this mandate up to 2019. No criteria, no roadmaps, this is not the European way we champion. In this context, we use the accession tools we have in our disposal hesitantly, without vision, without enthusiasm. Is it not inevitable that negotiations stall and progress is reversed? I leave it to my colleague to explain it much better. The EU has many achievements of which it can rightly claim, such as long period of peace and prosperity, secure transition to democracy for the enlargement countries, free trade and free movement for economic growth and living standards, as well as working on European-wide problems and challenges. However, despite these considerable achievements, the EU has lost its way and made several mistakes that have created divisions within Europe rather than bringing the people of Europe together. The mistakes of the EU are very much due to the mistakes of politicians 
who failed to reform the EU. This connected it from its citizens and have pushed the EU into a weaker direction. Greater wisdom by politics, both national and the EU level, could have moved the EU into a more successful and stronger position. We should understand that EU's enlargement policy is not independent than these leadership shortcomings of the EU. Let's be more specific and face it. The EU's Turkey policy is failed. Unfortunately, the EU have been making some serious mistakes since Turkey officially started EU membership negotiations in 2005. Politically blocking negotiation chapters, even those on democracy and fundamental rights being less and less present in the accession country, unpunished racist and Islamophobic discourse of certain EU politicians, wrong analysis of the issues, bartering away common European values. The country is not more democratic and progressive than it was half a decade ago. The country now is governed by government decrees. State of emergency is in force. The parliament is bypassed. Politicians and journalists are jailed. This is the current situation. As accession talks have been stalled, democratic values and civil liberties in the country have been eroded as the ruling party and its founding president have been taken steps to centralize power in one hand and undermine the rule of law and freedoms in my country. It's not a blame game. Europe should see it is own responsibility in today's bitter picture. The EU's Turkey policy of the last decade has proven counterproductive, eroding trust, trust and cooperation rather than enhancing it. It needs to be revised. Some of the fearful, dishonest politicians of Europe try to hide behind so-called eroding support of Turks to the EU accession process. It is not true. According to the survey conducted by IKV, a Turkish think tank, in 2016, 75% of the Turks is supporting Turkey's EU membership. And this support level rose 13% this year. However, 35% of the participants has the expectation that Turkey's EU membership will actually take place in the near future. It shows us well the severe trust problem between Turkish public and the EU, which fulfills the EU membership criteria, should be a highly desirable future EU member country. So then let's work for it, not against it. We must not blind ourselves to the fact that it was European rejection of the idea that a predominantly Muslim nation is at the center of all problems and challenges of today and tomorrow. A nation like Turkey deserves to be a full Western democracy. And it was on the track of by fulfilling Copenhagen criteria. The Europe we believe in must be ready to overcome its difficulties in its enlargement policy and give Turkey's millions of Democrats the support by opening the politically blocked chapters 23 and 24 on democracy, fundamental rights, judiciary, and better use the accession framework to enhance democracy in the country and embrace society. If it doesn't, 
the West, Europe, is doomed to lose Turkey as a whole. And this will hunt back Europe as well. Each and every one of us should never forget that. If there is a fire in Turkey, there can be no peace in Europe. We invite you all to stand up against anti-democrats and speak up for democracy by every means. As my colleague wisely said, Turkey deserves no less than being a fully Western democracy and we must work together with all forces that support this issue, but also try and persuade other forces, more conservative, deeply traditional, that the best way to ensure Turkey's economic and social growth is through closer relations with the EU. We have the successful customs union, 140 billion common trade, most investments in Turkey coming from the United States, the EU side. We can modernize it with more products and services by integrating our administration processes and our legal environment. We have our common problem with the refugees that we handled through the agreement of March 2016. We have open discussions on energy, on the climate change, on transport and tourism and so on. The European Union needs a stable Turkey with as many economic and political ties as possible. A clear answer is expected from us. Do we prefer a modern, westernized, secular Muslim country partnered with the EU or a conservative, introversive, religious country on our borders? If we want the first, we must work harder together with the people in Turkey that share the same dream. We have the clear Copenhagen criteria and all our chapters at our disposal, but we must not give false promises.